Now we're going to calculate the moment of inertia of a thin uniform disk. I just got one in the mail. I just got this one from uh, AOL. And if I insert and install this, I get 50 hours of free internet. So I'm pretty excited about that. I'm kidding, of course. This is a very old disk that I found lying around. The current year is 2047. Here you go. Take that. And uh, let's see. So the one thing to know is we're going to treat it with mass m and radius r. And in these problems, it's important that it is thin and that it is uniform. So the disk I just showed you had a hole in the center. We're going to treat the disk as though it does not have a hole in the center. It's kind of like that. And we're going to look at the rotation about the center. And a point does not define the axis, but it's implied that we mean along the center and perpendicular to the surface of the disk. Let's see, so it has radius r, it has mass m. Let's see, so you may recall we decided that the moment for a 3D object, or let's see, in this case a 2D object, is the integral of the surface mass density times r squared, where r is just the separation of each mass element from the axis of rotation. And in this case, we need a dA, because we're doing a surface integral over the disk, right? And sigma was that surface mass density, so sigma is the mass per unit area. Since this one's uniform, we just say the mass divided by the entire area. So m over pi r squared is sigma. Let's see. So we could plug that in there. But then the real question is, how do we do the integral? We have to deal with dA. So in this case, the way we're going to do it is imagine a little dA that goes around the circle like that and goes out some increase, increasing uh, radius r and then around the circle like that. That's our dA element. If I wanted to draw it a little bigger, so I'm going to flip it around and draw it like this so we can think about what is its area. So let's see, you, when it's, it's a teeny little element, you treat it basically like a rectangle, and you say, how far is it this way? Well, it's dr, right? You're at some radius r, and you go out dr. So that's dr. And then how far is it this way? Well, that's an arc length. That's the radius you're at times d theta as you go around. So that's r d theta. Uh, let's see, so the area of that is r d theta dr. r d theta is one side of the rectangle, dr is the other. And although it's r d theta dr, it's more fun to say r d r d theta. That's what we always say. I don't know why it's a pirate thing. So now, we're integrating with respect to two, two variables then, theta and r. So we're going to say the integral and the integral. And let's see, we're going to plug in for sigma m over pi r squared. And then we're going to say r squared. So it's important to keep up with it. This is big R, is the radius of the disk. Little r is how far each element is from the axis, rotation axis. And then we're going to put in r d theta dr. r d theta, or no, we're going to put r d r d theta. The order doesn't matter, it just helps you set it up. And then the two integrals that go with the two differentials, we've got to put limits on them to actually describe this actual disk. So the outside integral, we'll say, goes with the outside differential. So to add up every piece of this disk, we have to do these little rectangles at every radius and all the way around 360 degrees. Right? So that would be 0 to 2 pi, all the way around for theta. And we've got to catch r everywhere between 0 and big R. So that integral is 0 to big R. Let's see, and then I think we're in pretty good shape here. So let's go ahead and do the theta integral. The integral of d theta is theta. Evaluate theta from 0 to 2 pi, and it's just 2 pi, right? Theta evaluated at 2 pi is 2 pi, minus theta at 0 is 0. So I'm going to save myself a little time. 0 to r, we keep the m, we keep the pi r squared constants. We'll combine these to make r cubed dr, but the integral of this was just a 2 pi, a factor of 2 pi. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and uh, combine this 2 pi, that pi, and that pi go together. So we're going to go ahead and put these constants outside. We've got 2m over uh, big R squared. And let's go ahead and integrate the R integral. So integral of R cubed is 1 fourth R squared, or R, R to the fourth. And that one's evaluated from 0 to big R. Let's see if I'm with my notes at all here. Yes, I am good. 
Uh, let's see. So now we evaluate this at big R. So that's big R to the fourth minus zero. Right? So this is 2m over r squared, 1 fourth times big R to the fourth. So now more stuff will cancel. This 2 and that 4, well, it'll become a 2. And then these will go away, and that'll become a 2. And we end up with 1 half m r squared. So i of the disk through that axis is 1 half m r squared. Pretty good. We're done. That's it. Now, I did this uh, with sort of a double integral. And if you're happy with that, then just stop the video. You're done. But if you say, I've seen this done a different way that seemed a little easier. I've seen it done with a ring. So let's do it real quick with a ring. If the differential area is a ring, it's really the same thing. It just automatically does one of the steps. But just in case you're used to that, or you've seen that before, or you're confused, or you want to see it again, we'll do it the shortcut way. The shortcut way says, here's the disk. And the differential area since, right, since nothing depends on theta, um, uh, since nothing depends on theta, make dA go around theta. Okay. You can't do it with r. You can't just write one dA for r and call it pi r squared, because things do depend on r. right? So there's an r in our formula here. There's an r in the differential. But theta shows up nowhere. So instead of your differential area being this little thing, you just take it all around. And your differential area is this little thing. All right? And it's at some radius r, little r. And then you just unwind it. Let me help you unwind here. And it makes a little strip that's like a rectangle. And you say, what's the width of the rectangle? dr. What's the length of the rectangle? 2 pi r. And then dA, therefore, is 2 pi r dr. All right. So then you set up your integral, and you say i of the disk equals this integral of sigma, which was m over pi r squared, big R, m over pi big R squared, times little r squared. That's the one we're changing as we walk around the disk, uh, times dA. And dA is just 2 pi um, r dr. And maybe now you can see why they're the same thing. In this new dA we made, here is your theta integral. The d theta becomes 2 pi, and r dr was the other part. And we can still do it, right? We got the time. We don't actually use film anymore, right? So the pi goes away. It's 2m over r squared, integral of r cubed, uh, dr from 0 to r. And now it's exactly the same. We're going to save film at this point, right? 2m over r squared, 1 fourth r to the fourth is what that becomes. And you get the same answer. So you may see it done both ways. We just have the convenience that there's no dependence on theta would allow us to do that. But really, this is the formal way to do it.